But today is a blessed day, the best month and the best day of the week. So we are in this beautiful day of a Friday and perhaps the most blessed moments in this beautiful day of a Friday. The question I have for you, does it move your heart to know that the spirituality of this month and that of this day and that of this moment is something very lofty and very high? Or does it seem to you and I that it is just an ordinary day in an ordinary month? I think for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is indeed a time when the hearts are softened. And this is the moment that we need to seize in order to earn the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may peace be upon him, was climbing onto the mimbar, the staircase, where he was about to deliver his lecture. And he happened to say, Ameen, thrice. When he was asked why he said, Ameen, he said, the dua was made by the angel and I was just saying Ameen to these duas. One of those duas was Wailul liman adraka Ramadana falam yughfarlah. Destruction be upon the one who has been granted the gift of witnessing Ramadan and still does not achieve forgiveness. Which means the season of forgiveness is now. Forgiveness is literally on sale as though the commodities that you really desire to buy are not at only at half price, but going at less than one tenth of the price. We would be foolish if we did not achieve it. So my brothers and sisters, I invite you to ask forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever our shortcomings have been. We are human beings. Human nature makes us err. We commit sin, some of which may be major, which requires specific seeking of forgiveness known as Tawbah. The others, the minor sins, they also require the seeking of forgiveness. And it is seasons like this, wherein forgiveness is being granted wholesale. A loser is the one who does not get it. My brothers and sisters, the biggest person who has succeeded in this month is the one who has achieved the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Aisha radiallahu anha, when she had arrived in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, she was asked a question or she asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a question that, O oh Messenger, what should I say if I am to be granted the goodness of witnessing the night of decree known as Laylatul Qadr? So he says, Say, Allahumma inna ka afuwun tu hibbul afwa fa'fu anni. O oh Allah, you love to forgive, you are forgiving. O oh Allah, you are most forgiving and you love to forgive. So forgive me. Even if that single supplication is accepted from us, we will definitely be from amongst those who have succeeded in the month of Ramadan. My brothers and sisters, the Quran speaks of how this entire month has been prescribed upon us in order for us to be able to achieve what is known as taqwa, what is known as God consciousness. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was upon those before you in order that you may achieve the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, let us become conscious of Allah. Let us earn forgiveness. The truth is, no one has a guarantee that they will witness another month of Ramadan. This might be the last month that you will ever witness from amongst these blessed months of Ramadan. No one has a guarantee that they will survive to see Ramadan 1436 Hijri. This year 1435, we are fortunate to be witnessing it already. My brothers and sisters, so much so, no one has a guarantee that they will witness the end of this month itself. So ask Allah's forgiveness here and now. Ya Allah, forgive us. 
My brothers and sisters, it is important to realize none of us have a guarantee that we will witness the end of this week, nor do we have a guarantee that we will witness the end of the day, nor do we have a guarantee that we will walk out of this masjid. So you are meant to clear your record with Allah as soon as possible. And the same applies to me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me the day he takes me away and may he bless you all the day he takes you away. But the truth is we do not know when we are going. So this is the gift of Allah. Become conscious of it. He loves us so much that he has not made all the days the same so that we feel to turn to him. Don't you agree that in the month of Ramadan, the hearts are softened. We tend to reach out in charitable deeds much more in the month of Ramadan than we do during the other months. Not to say that we are not charitable in them too, but it is the condition of the heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely granted us such a gift regarding that we feel the goodness make use of it. There is no point in saying this Ramadan is blessed. The recitation of the Quran that the Imam is reading is so good. The lectures we've heard are so powerful, yet we have not turned. What is the point of hearing powerful lectures one after the other when we have done nothing about it? It is like seeing the best business deal in front of us and we did not participate or we did not earn and we did not earn any profit. So my brothers and sisters, it is up to us to start up with the dealing with Allah هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Allah says, should I not show you that business that you shall engage in that will result in your savior from some painful punishment? What is it? تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Believe in Allah and His Messenger and strive in His path with your wealth and yourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast on the path. My brothers and sisters, this is the month of resolutions. Make your resolutions here and now. Promise Allah you will quit your bad habits. This may be the last chance you have in order to do that. You may quit your bad habits whether it be as trivial as some may think. Habits such as smoking, habits that people may never ever be proud of, such as being hooked onto pornography, such as gambling, such as alcohol, whatever else it may be. Some may be hooked on adultery. Brothers and sisters, this is your chance to earn forgiveness of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, the blessed month of Ramadan, the day of a Friday, the time of the khutbah. Isn't it about time that our hearts are softened towards Allah? Quit those habits, cut them now, promise Allah and believe me, if you were to die right here right now perhaps Allah would grant you paradise just because of the goodness of your heart and your intention may Allah forgive us all my brothers and sisters a passionate call from this pulpit of this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have come here because Allah loves you you would not be in this house of Allah had you not had a good link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he put it in your heart to come to his house because he loves you and because you have a link with him my brothers and sisters so feel that link consider yourselves people who are fortunate to be in the house of your own maker. This house is not known as mine nor yours, nor is it known as the house belonging to the Imam or anyone else. It is the house of my maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is known as Baytullah, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, what an honor to be in the house of Allah. I am a brother of yours, reminding myself and yourselves, let's turn to Allah. As I said, we have no guarantee we will see another month of Ramadan. My brothers and sisters, some of us have children, some of us have family members, some of us are married, we have spouses, we have greater responsibilities. How have you been treating your spouse? How have you been spending time with your children? Remember, our duty as Muslimin is to hand over the torch of Iman to our next generation so that when we die, they will continue worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are still dilly-dallying in our own sins and we have not turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do we expect our children and family members to turn to Allah when Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. 
O you who believe, save yourselves and your family members from the fire. The fire that shall be kindled by men and stone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that fire. And this is why the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he asked for goodness, he used to say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar. Oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world. We all want goodness. Everyone wants to earn. We all want beautiful deals. We all want money. We all want wealth. We all want a good home and good conveyance. We all want good clothing and a good scent and so on. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. The dua includes that. Oh Allah, grant us goodness in the dunya. But that will be of no use if we were to die having forgotten. Wafil akhirati hasana. And oh Allah, grant us goodness in the life after. Grant us goodness in the akhirah, the hereafter. When I die, I want goodness. My brothers and sisters, the currency of the life after is not the dollar or the rand or the ringgit. No, the currency of the life after is known as the deeds that you engage in. So convert your health whilst you are healthy into good deeds. Convert your money that you have in this world whilst you have it into good deeds. Convert the goodness that you have, your young age and your ability that you have, your free time that you have, convert it into deeds so that you can amass the currency that will help you when you get to your grave, my brothers and sisters. This is the currency. And we have the month of Ramadan where this currency is being dished out and it's being given wholesale to us. Allah says, you engage in one good deed, I will multiply it for you. You have engaged in it whilst you were fasting. You have engaged in it in the blessed month of Ramadan. Whilst you were fasting, the condition of salah in the month of Ramadan is such that the reward is multiplied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fasting is for me and I will recompense it and reward it myself. Which means the reward of fasting is not only multiplied tenfold, but up to 70 fold going to 700 fold and beyond because Allah loves us. We abstain from food and drink and permissible sexual desires solely for the pleasure of Allah, even though it is right in front of us. The question I have, surely my brothers and sisters, if you can stay away from that which is permissible for one whole month, yet it is in front of you. If we did it correctly, surely it would be easy for us to stay away from that which is prohibited when it is in front of us for the rest of the 11 months of the year, my brothers and sisters. If I could stay away from halal for one month, why can I not stay away from haram for the other 11 months? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me strong in this month of Ramadan. My brothers and sisters, soften your hearts. Come towards Allah. Sort your matters out in your families. Some of us do not talk to our brothers, our children, our fathers, our in-laws and so on for petty matters. Matters connected to wealth. Matters connected to small misunderstandings between family members. Sort them out. It might be your last chance to sort it out. Be the better person and go out to apologize. Go out to sort your matters. If you die in that condition, perhaps Allah will look at how you were so keen to sort your matters out and He may forgive you just because of that. May Allah forgive us with any excuse. My brothers and sisters, give Allah that excuse. Ask Allah's forgiveness at all times. Do not be shy. Some people think that we only ask Allah's forgiveness when we know we have done something wrong. That is incorrect. When you know you've done something wrong, you must ask Allah's forgiveness. But that is not the only time you ask Allah's forgiveness. We live in an environment where sometimes we are committing sin without even realizing. Continue to ask Allah. Continue to ask His forgiveness. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as much as he was the messenger and he was the best of creation, he used to ask Allah's forgiveness up to 100 times a day. Yet he had no sins to be forgiven. This was because as he sought forgiveness, he earned closeness to Allah and he became the closest and he always was the closest and he earned the highest of ranks. Do you want high ranks? If that is the case, ask Allah's forgiveness every single day, a hundred times and more, but do not just pay lip service to it by saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah without thinking what am I saying? 
When we say Astaghfirullah, we should pause for a moment and think to ourselves, I'm actually saying, Oh Allah, forgive me, I have wronged. I have done something wrong, Ya Allah, forgive me, grant me goodness. May Allah forgive us all. Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we pray on this day for those who are not yet married to be granted spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. Those who are trying to have children for years on end and do not have children, may Allah bless you with children. My brothers and sisters, this is the month of dua. This is the month of supplication. Call out to Allah. Do not lose hope in His mercy. Call out to Allah to help our suffering brothers and sisters across the globe. Today we are seated here. We are living in such harmony and peace. There are brothers and sisters of ours right now who are living in other conditions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make life easy for them. And may He sort their matters out and solve their problems. And may He grant them goodness and ease. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم